Today, uh, the Clinch Ministerial Association is gathering as uh, we uh, prepare for Thanksgiving. During this time of the pandemic, we're going to continue to do our ministerial services um, by live stream. We're actually recording this a little bit early, and we'll be uploading this. And so we hope that you are blessed by this as uh, we talk about Thanksgiving. We're going to do kind of the same format that we did to our, for our back to school uh, prayer service in which we're just going to discuss topics and then pray over them. And so uh, we hope it is a blessing. I want to start out by reading from Psalms chapter 105. Give thanks to Yahweh, call on His name, proclaim His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell about all His wonderful works, honor His holy name, let the hearts of those who seek Yahweh rejoice. Search for the Lord and for His strength, seek His face always. Remember the wonderful works He has done, His wonders and the judgments He has pronounced. As we enter into this time of thanksgiving, there's a lot for us to be thankful for, but we have to first realize that we start by being thankful to God. And so we're going to open this in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Joseph Carter to open uh, in prayer, the pastor of the United Methodist Church. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, first give you thanks for this opportunity. You bless us with so many opportunities opportunities to draw together and the one thing that binds us all is our love for you and your love for us and so lord as we come together in this time as we come together to talk about thanksgiving and what it means to be thankful we ask you father to allow your holy spirit to to enter this place to lead us and guide us in our discussions so that all that we do in this time may be pleasing to you and we offer it in christ's holy name Amen. Well, all of us have so much to be thankful for. Um, we picked a, a few different subjects to talk about today, but it is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, there is so much more that we can talk about. But uh, I want us to first um, talk about um, our salvation, and because that's where it begins. As, uh, we read that verse about... Uh, about how we are to be thankful to God. The reason we're thankful to God is our salvation. So, uh, somebody, we didn't really plan out who was going to talk on these different things. This is kind of more uh, from the hip, but uh, someone would like to share just their, their salvation experience. I, I will. And it came to mind immediately uh, the time you mentioned that about salvation um, because I can see mind's eye I can see the place know exactly where it is in Macon, Georgia Mercer University there at the little uh, chapel not the big auditorium but a little chapel revival is on, actually on campus the Baptist student and I can take you right now to the, uh, to the spot at the altar uh, in the early fall early October of I would say. I've been in church all my life and uh, even said a sinner's prayer um, and joined the church because that was the thing we did. Uh, when we grew up, we, we grew up, you joined the church. You went to church, you joined the church, but I uh, truly met the Savior. Uh, and things have never been the same. Uh, a lot of things changed then and have changed since, but I, I'm reminded um, uh, a couple of things that I, I think about about that is the Apostle Paul in all his writings of the New Testament, he just necked. We got a great term in South Georgia about calling it over it. You had the flu, you got over it. You get a bad leg, you get a, you over it. Well, the Apostle Paul never over saved. And I hope I never over being saved. I hope, honestly, as I get older, I hope, um, and I, I feel like I am, I'm more appreciative. saved, I understood it some, I understand it so much more, the depths of it and what it costs. It cost Christ, it cost me. So I'm very appreciative. Very well. You 
you spoke about the uh, Apostle Paul, it always amazed me when you read Scripture about every time he preached, he told his salvation story, his testimony, as uh, the old preachers used to call it. Tell me your testimony. I like to just tell people, tell me your story. Um, our salvation story is unique to every single one of us. And um, I always begin when you start talking to people, I want to hear that story. Anybody else want to share their story? I'm kind of like Brother Howard that uh, my salvation experience, I, I can carry you to the exact same place, same altar, same old church. It's still there, a little block building over in Berrien County and, and uh, Nashville. And uh, Sam Luke, young, just early 20s evangelist, was in town. He was preaching at that old out church that we were a part of, you know, and, and uh, I was raised in that church, and uh, I was uh, preteen and had that tremendous experience, but I can carry you to the exact place, at that old wooden rail altar up there that, that uh, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful that I was raised in a family that believed that, and that we would have altar time at, at church, and my dad would come, and He'd say, let's me and you go to the altar and let's me and you pray. And, uh, you know, and, and all, all the prayers didn't stick throughout my life. I wish they had, but they, did, but they didn't. It was, uh, but, you know, I can, I'm like Brother Howard. I can carry you to the exact place when that experience came. And, and, and you knew nobody could tell you different. You were saved. And you said that happened over in Nashville? In Nashville. Did you ever go past that building? Oh, all the, I will. I'll go pull up in the yard and just reminisce. You know, and, and old concrete floor, block walls, no AC. We just had an attic fan and opened the windows and pulled bugs and all. I'm just telling you what I was raised and, and, and not doubting that. I'm, I'm thankful for that. That's part of our, my salvation story. That's the way we were raised. I'm so thankful for that. But, but yes, I do. I pull back up in that old yard and and oh, the building's not what it was at one time, but doesn't matter. The members are there. The reason I ask is I do the same thing. I can make them as lonely. If I can, but make them, I'll intentionally go by. Yes. And, and ride by. And the crazy thing about it, I can remember the title of the sermon. Student, preacher. Okay. Plastic Jesus said so many people they grow up in church and been in church like they got a little plastic Jesus on their dashboard and they take him down most of the time occasionally put him up for show that was the that was the sermon plastic Jesus I remember all it's strange how you those things stick yeah. with you about that yeah it's tremendous I may use that as a sermon just get <laughs> okay feel free <laughs> I can't I can't tell you the boy's name to preach it but you go ahead. Uh. If, if I were to, um, to talk about my salvation experience, the, my story doesn't come from when I made that commitment, um, but it comes from when I made a recommitment. Um, it was scripture that says uh, God is married to the backslide. Um, and what was contemporary gospel when I was growing up, Andre Crouch sang a song, Take Me Back. Take Me Back, dear Lord to the place where I first believed you and and, and when, when I recommitted my my life, that song hit my spirit and it did take me back to, like you said, the, the church where we heist the wonders, as they say, and that I can remember I was six or seven when they finally put bathrooms inside of the church. Um, um, and so I can, I can remember all of that, but my, I, I always start from my recommitment when I when I finally uh, 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 yielded to his yearning. And, and see how I was. Y'all saw some of the pictures. I, those were pictures that were taken in Saudi Arabia. And I was on the other side of the world. And the truth is, didn't know if I would be sitting here today. To be uh, uh, um, near on the continent and, and two 
countries removed from the places Jesus belonged. And, and, and um, in my quote unquote, my African uh, American experience um, um, to be in Saudi Arabia, near Mecca, and all of that, I went past that. I, I came back to the Jesus that I was raised with. We had chapel services in, uh, in the tent over there uh, on Sunday. Some people got baptized while we were over there. I was part of the, uh, um, the gospel choir. We turned into the gospel choir. <laughs> and, 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 and it was from that moment I said, you know, it would be such a waste. military colleague of mine said, no, when you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart, God knew about all this, whatever you was going to be doing to bring you to this spot where you had to recommit because you are already saved. And I pondered on that for months. I, I, it really would seem, but as soon as I got back to the United States, I was back at my home church and Honestly, I have, have not looked back and, and, and followed the, the yearning and the urging that was in me that eventually led to me accepting. Not to accept, because I, I resist. I don't know about anybody else in this sentence, uh, my call to preach. Um, uh, uh, truth is, I don't know about nobody else. I never heard a preacher say this. I thought I could reconcile myself in one sermon, you know, in the, in the, in the trial sermon. Okay, God, I did it. Now back to, yeah. back to what Tim want to do. You know, uh, uh, I'm in the church now, so they ought to be good enough, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I mean, I was, whew, I had a contract <laughs> went ready for him. <laughs> God, don't you know I changed? You know I changed. You know me better than I know myself. You, Changed. I did this. I was over. I did it. And I've been living for you. I was teaching Sunday school. Come on, God. I, I preached. Uh, you remember? I preached on Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday, 1999. I did my trial sermon. That ought to be enough. <laughs> but um, as God <laughs> moved me, uh, and, and, and to, to where he was taking me, it fulfilled it was salvation. It fulfilled in me salvation wasn't just, uh, I heard, heard, heard a, a holiness preacher say it this way, that it wasn't just fire insurance. It wasn't for me just to miss the pit of hell, but he saved me for a purpose. And that, that's what I really had to deal with, that I wasn't just saved to have eternal salvation and, and missed the pit and the fire, but he had a plan for me all along, and I didn't. And, and I didn't come to that conclusion uh, 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 until after, <laughs> after I, I thought I had reconciled my cause by doing my initial sermon. Mm -hmm. After I had reconciled my um, with being ordained and all that, uh, uh, and, and trying to still. Uh, live my secular life and have a, uh, um, a committed relationship that was personal only, that didn't affect no, no, nobody else. I, I tell somebody, give my testimony here and there as he leaves me. I thought that was enough, man. And he would lead me to a, the pulpit and lead me to pastorship. Man. And, and that right there was the, the greatest comprehension. That's the best word I can use. I'm, my greatest comprehension about salvation. The purpose of my salvation. You know, I hear your story, Tim, and I, I love listening to these stories. Because even though they're all unique, I can hear me in each one of them just a little bit too. Like running, running, running. <laughs> trying to pacify a holy God with something I was offering. Uh, but, you know, in, in listening to them, and, and hearing what you had to say, Howard, and, and Jerry, in those special places that you still drive by, uh, those how you can remember what happened on that day specifically, and how we're thankful for that, mm -hmm. I, I think it points back 
really strongly to the fact that you also realize there wasn't one thing you, not one thing you did in that moment. It was all on God, and the only thing you did, if you did anything, was surrender. That that God did something incredible for you. He did something incredible for all of us in that salvation experience. Whether mm-hmm. it was, I've heard it described this way. You made me think of this, Tim. Whether it was like flipping on a light or turning up a dimmer switch, that God came to us and presented Himself to us in a way that we couldn't deny who He was. And when we realize that. It is certainly something to be thankful for, no doubt. Our thanksgiving has to start with our salvation, but we know that there's a large population in this world that doesn't have a story like this. And they have never accepted Christ as their Savior. They've never asked for forgiveness of their sins. Some because they've never heard the, the message. Some because they have rejected. But um, let us take a moment and just pray. Thanking God for our salvation, but praying for the salvation of all those who've yet to have a story. I might ask Nick Johnson to lead that prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we, we come before you. And God, first and foremost, we just want to praise your name. God, we want to thank you for revealing yourself to us here on this stage, but God, also for many of those who are listening uh, and and, uh, understanding that they have a story just similar to what we have, God, that you have come and you've revealed yourself, and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt you are real, you are God, and Lord, we've asked for that salvation to come. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, what you give uh, to us each and every day, God, and, and something that it doesn't just stop in one moment. But, Lord, you carry us and sustain us over a lifetime. And, God, I thank you for that. As the Apostle Paul said, not that I've obtained it, but that I'm leaving what is behind and I'm striving for what is ahead. God, help us to continue to seek you, to seek your face, and to do your will every single day of our lives. But, God, I also know that there are many in this world who do not know your peace. They do not know your love and that mercy and grace. And, God, I pray right now, Lord, that for those who have heard the message and they've rejected you, God, I pray you soften their heart. Do all that is necessary to begin a a work within them, God. And and we know that if you will do so and that work begins, you'll see it through to completion. God, soften their heart. Lord, I also pray for all of us listening here and on this stage, God, that we will not not stand by, we will not be idle, but God, we'll see that we have a purpose in this role, God, and our purpose is to go and to witness, to be your disciples, Lord, and, and bring that message of repentance and peace. Uh, to this world. God, help us to be open, not just with our lives and how we live, but with our mouths as well, and proclaim your name, that you alone are the way of salvation. God, I pray that salvation comes to those who have rejected you. God, I pray salvation comes to those who have not yet heard, but Lord, I pray that people will come into their lives, the message will be presented, and they'll turn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It all begins with salvation, but Normally, when we sit down at Thanksgiving, whether we sit down at a table with our family or um, we go to a restaurant and people start talking about what they're thankful for, they go over a whole list of things. As Christians, I think that we have things to be thankful for that others do not. Um, What makes being a Christian different uh, on Thanksgiving? We started with our salvation. But, but you mentioned fire insurance. Salvation is fire insurance. I want us to kind of go into, um, as people are watching this, whether they're Christians or, or non-Christians, what are the spiritual blessings that a Christian has that no one else has? In other words, what makes being a Christian special? I'm going to start, guys. I, I want to start before you all take it, because this is my favorite. Um, it's, it's something that, that I live by, but... There is a special peace that comes with knowing Christ. There's a special peace in knowing that God is in control of all things. Um, in, in this time of, of uncertainty with whatever it be, our, uh, the health care, um, uh, for coming from COVID or the political system that seems to be here, whatever it might be, there is a peace of knowing that no matter what this world seems to have going on, we know that God is in control and we can rest in that. Um, but I also think that peace comes in just other small times in our lives. And, 
uh, there are many different uh, times whenever I remember um, before I, I moved here to Homerville um, and before Sarah and I got married, um, I was living in my, my grandfather's house. So he had passed away and I remodeled it. Um, I was broken into um, about six or seven times in the course of about 10 months. And talk about kind of being scared, you know, not wanting to go home, you know, but I never was really scared. Now, my wife, on the other hand, terrified. She didn't even want to come over and hang out at the house with me, you know. And, and uh, about two weeks before we were to get married, uh, she looked at me and said, I, I just don't think I can do that, Nick. And, and so then I had a new kind of fear. Well, where are we going to live? <laughs> where are we, we going to live? Um, but I had a peace that came over me. And God, he provided. Um, he provided the way that we could afford the apartment that we were in. And then all of the things that come with that, you have to put your down payment, you have to, you know, put your security deposits in for your electricity and all that stuff. And I, I, we didn't really prepare for that because I had a place to live, but God provided. But the peace never left me, and it was always there. Um, but that peace comes in, in many different forms. Uh, whenever somebody, you know, gets a little angry or upset with me uh, for maybe words that, that maybe I said unintentionally, um, I have a peace. I, I'm not a real hot-tempered kind of guy. Uh, the peace of God controls me. Um, but that's something I'm very thankful for, knowing that God is in control of all things. And no matter what happens in this world that seems to, to blindside me, God's never caught by surprise. And that gives me a comfort. If I would pick up from what um, Pastor Nick said about the, um, he said the peace, but the peace that what God is in control that's unique to Christians. Um, and even in, 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 in Judaism, you've got, uh, you've got a contractual agreement with God that, that I got to, thou shalt uh, this run with it, and thou shalt not this run. ceremonial cleansing and all these kind of things that 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 uh, uh, um, that you got to have a checklist for um, 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 and Catholicism um, um, even though they they believe in Christ they still put a, a portion of that in with uh, 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 um, with how many Hail Marys you need to do and, and, all, and, 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 and the, but the, our true relationship with Christ Paul talks about in Romans justification and, and uh, um, in the justification process he, 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 he talks about righteousness that's not based on how right or wrong I am but a righteousness in, in trusting in God through Jesus Christ and that, that's, that's very unique to earthly religion. The righteousness that's based on my trusting God through the promises of, of Jesus Christ. That, that's, and so, and so it, 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 it makes it, uh, uh, it makes that peace that you were talking about, Nick. I, I don't have to second guess, wait a minute, I know I said I'm saved, but am I really? Did I do, uh, uh, did I walk on my, on, on hop on one foot long enough? Did I Extend my arms out far enough and, and keep them there. This, you know, uh, uh, did I did I hold up something on my head uh, uh, and, and balance it? I, uh, 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 you know, all I need to understand and all I need to trust and believe is A, B, C. A, admit I was born in sin, unworthy of His salvation. B, believe. That God loved us enough that whosoever will believe in him, he shall save us and see confess it. I gotta tell somebody. It, it's not a secret. I, I I'm not I don't have a closet relationship with God. Uh, uh, it's an open relationship. I, everybody should know. Confess it before the masses. I'm saved. I renounce my the sin nature that I was born in that I call when I re it's renounced. Confess it. Lord, Jesus is Lord. And that's unique. Mm -hmm. 
following up a little bit on that idea of peace that y'all are speaking of, peace of mind, uh, and all, and, and you find that all throughout the Bible, peace that surpasses all understanding, because it don't make no sense. You should be in turmoil, uh, and you find yourself not. Catch you a little bit like you're here, uh, because you're not freaking out. Uh, and so if you try to explain it, you know, it's really, really difficult. Um, but I, I like to look at it this way, and it's helped me. Is honestly, this world is a pressure. You've got the pressures, of job, families, uh, bills, um, simple world, broken uh, sickness. It just is. It, it can be a pressure cooker, and uh, it's no wonder that stress causes so much health problems and all that. But um, the way I, I'd like to say, I thought of this. finally clicked in my arrow head is that really um, all I have to do God's child is follow his lead and obey him I know how to do what he says and I ain't got to make all these decisions I know that's bad English y'all or teachers y'all <laughs> it just is but that's how it comes down is I ain't got to make it. all I've got to do is follow and he assumes responsibility for me and I'll not leave here one day sooner than I'm supposed to and I'll not get one sickness I'm not supposed to or those type of things if I'm in his care his control what he allows and what he doesn't allow and how he works things out in his life he takes all the pressure off you know him and say okay Lord you got this because I don't uh, and I I couldn't figure it out if I wanted to so I'm going to follow you as, obey you as best as I know how and it's amazing um, out of his goodness and his grace as he gives how that just kind of seems to take the pressure off whether times are good, times are bad lay down and go to sleep get up and go again the next day I find out sometimes that that pressure comes when we get off of assignment because we stay on assignment it's just it's, that peace comes that surpasses all understanding Stay on the sign. That's what you just, you know, just stay on the sign. I'm so thankful for it because when, before I got saved, and even for a long time after I got saved, I didn't live in a way that, you know, I was naturally stressed out, very high strung, um, prone to getting a lot of arguments, a lot of yeah, yeah, that type of thing, be right in the middle of all of it. And over the years, His grace and Him knocking some rough edges off the sand in a way, and um, dealing with my hard head about some things, and a lot of that away, and given that, you know, a lot of things that would throw me into a tailspin or a turmoil or uproar don't even, don't even show has shown me as it's all been, and I'm very grateful. L- listening to y'all, I'm reminded of Paul's words, and I think it's First Thessalonians, where he says, in all things, mm-hmm. give thanks. Since we're talking about thankfulness, yeah. you know, and there's been lots of folks who write books and debate about exactly what that means. Um, but I think, to your point, Howard, in, in whatever our circumstances are, mm-hmm. whatever they are, we can still give thanks. If our circumstances are, are circumstances of cancer, in cancer, maybe not for cancer, but in cancer, right. we, we can give thanks. In poverty, we can give thanks. In whatever it is, we can give thanks. And I think one of the reasons is because we sit in the midst of that, and it, you're right, it doesn't make a bit of sense mm-hmm. that we're at peace. No, the mm-hmm. world even would tell us, what's wrong with you? you? You're supposed to be all twisted up. And and we're and we're not. And then then we see him use those things to draw us closer, to speak to a family member, to change somebody else's life. And how could we not give thanks in that circumstance? Something else I'm, I'm thankful for is you're talking about unique to, to the Christian. Um, because everybody has things they can be thankful for, whether it be you know, that we have a job, we have a house, we have family. Um, but unique to, to the Christian, uh, I'm thankful for clarity. That through his word, I now know my purpose in this life. I don't have to question why am I here. Um, I'm thankful that through his word, 
I can handle some of those really difficult things that come up of uh, why is there evil here? And, and I might not get the, the, the most best answer I can think of. Uh, I don't have uh, everything figured out, but I have a, uh, an understanding that sin is a product of this world that God is going to redeem one day. And I have that clarity. I have that understanding. I also know the end, and that's something I'm very thankful for. I know uh, where my end lies. I know that one day when I take my last breath here, I will have eternity in heaven. Um, but I also know the end of this, of this world and the end of the evil nature of this world, the end of Satan. And uh, I know that one day things will be uh, as it should be with God reigning supreme and no more evil, no more uh, sickness and pain or anything like that. Um, that's unique to the Christian. The world does not have that same clarity, and I'm thankful for that. Well, as Christians, we have more to be thankful than the world. We don't always act like that. Sometimes Christians walk around with the, the saddest face and the woe is me attitude. Um, but beyond our salvation, we have this peace that you're talking about, um, this um, understanding, um, clarity, direction. You know, we know what's, what we're supposed to do. The problem is a lot of times we don't do it. Uh, that is the, the Christian struggle. What frustrates me as a pastor, my people know what they're supposed to do. They have uh, the best instruction manual. We call it the Bible. And half the time they don't read it. And when they do read it, they ignore it. And uh, we have been given this great blessing. And we're thankful for it, but we also need to be praying that everybody on this platform um, lives by Scripture, follows God's direction, enjoys that peace that He promises, but also that our churches follow those same things. And so I'm going to ask uh, Brother Jerry if you can pray over that. Sure. Father, we absolutely come in the name of Jesus Christ. The only name that can bring us that peace that is absolutely necessary, that thankfulness that only we can have through that name, the sovereignty that only comes through that name, the clarity that only comes through that name. Father, we just pray today in the name of Jesus that you would not only touch our communities during this time of thanksgiving, but that you would touch our churches. God, and I pray, as Brother Paul just said, that you would put within us as leaders of our churches, respectively, as our churches also, that when we read the Bible, let us obey it. Give us understanding of it. And Father, that we would stay on assignment from you, that that peace that passes all understanding would come within us and never lose it. And Father, we just ask everything today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We came up with some topics as we uh, planned to do this. We've already went about 20 minutes, so we've only got about 10 more minutes because I know most people aren't going to sit at home and watch us for a full hour. We'll be lucky if we get 30 minutes. So we did go hit the, the two most important ones first. Uh, the other topics that we talked about discussing was church, our community, our families, and our country. And so in, our, in the next 10 minutes, let's try to hit those four things, why you are thankful for those, and then we're going to have a prayer for those. Um, so let's talk about our, our churches. And of course, all of us are jaded in, in this room. We all think that we are the pastor of the best church in Homerville, maybe even in Georgia, that we each have the best people. And only one of us is right about that. And it happens to be the person <laughs> holding the microphone. But um, and he's speaking speaking in the microphone. <laughs> but um, just tell me, why are you thankful for the church? Not just necessarily your church, but what does the church give you that somebody outside the church needs? One word, fellowship. The fellowship of the brethren the, 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 and sisters, of course. When I say brethren, I mean everybody. Uh, regardless of 
which church we may be jaded towards uh, knowing that yours is the best. But anyway, we, it's just a fellowship that even even a living example of it today, sitting here on this stage recording what we're thankful of. I, I think if I could take a one word definition, I would use I would choose fellowship of the church. And it's been the hardest thing to keep do, keep going in the church uh, during this time. Um, I haven't really hugged anybody in my church since March. Kind of occasionally I'll slip in a handshake there. But uh, it's hard because we aren't visiting people's homes as often. We, we, we try to stay away from people and people miss that, that touch, that feeling of love that they get when you pat them on the back, which we're not even doing. And uh, this has been hard a hard year for that. What are some other things that our church provides that they can't get anywhere else in the world? Um, I, I, I like to remind us uh, uh, that the, the, the church is not what I heard an old preacher call the church house. But it's, it's the body of believers that extends from your congregation all our congregation, all of us universally are part of the church. And, and so what the church really provides is, is he, he said the fellowship and, and so much so many times when we think of fellowship it's a surface fellowship. But the universal fellowship is, is what we all believe and when we all believe and how we all believe. And, 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 and gives us that, that, that power uh, um, the some say one working power in the name right uh, 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 of the lamb and, and, and so um, the blood of Jesus uh, uh, and, and, and all the movement of, of of the church is what makes us unique and and, and it's the extension of that is even how we have ideas to come together like, like we do. Because deep on the inside of us, we realize no matter how great we think our church is, you know, mistake of uh, <laughs> uh, we realize that the church is not just our church where we pastor or where we worship. We, we, it, we realize that and we seek it out. At the laundromat, and your wife, uh, uh, when his wife approached my wife, that was because of the church. Church. That's the church. When I was uh, moving here as a new pastor here, and, um, and was um, turning into U Haul, and your member said, We got a new pastor too. That was the church. And so, uh, um, we, we we know on the inside that no matter how humanist we are to say my church is the best church, we we realize on the deep on the inside of us that the churches and uh, um, our congregations are extension of that great holy church, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. It is definitely <coughs> something that is supernatural and divine. You know, we always think. Of instant bond and the depth of the bond through the Christian is something that is supernatural in nature. It's within this group of men right here, the closest we share. Uh, it's between, like you said, with, uh, welcome to the community. There is something there. Uh, sometimes Dawn and I will see somebody uh, and we may not even get hardly to talk to them, but we have a term we say, we just say they've got the glow. Mm -hmm. They've got the glow. There's just something about them that I could almost tell you, hey, that person. Right. Boom. That, there goes a Jesus freak mm -hmm. right there. And there's something that God gives uh, all his Jesus freaks as he causes us to love one another deeply and have that connection when we're
we're not all very lovable at times and we're all very different, but yet, and it, it really is a something supernatural. We were talking about things that non-Christians can't be thankful for the way we can, is non-Christians have some very deep friendship at times, deep family, but there's something between brothers and sisters in Christ that is beyond, another thing that's beyond comprehension. I agree with that, Howard. That's that's really good, and I think that's one of the things that's made this whole COVID season a difficult season for us because we've not been able to come together like we did before. We've not been able to assemble like we did before. But it points me to one thing about the church that I love, and it's that's its resilience. Right. The church is resilient. I, I've had some folks. I know you have too. Say, well, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, what's going to happen to the church? Are we going to be okay? Is the church going to be okay? And I'm reminded that man's been trying to destroy it for over 2,000 years and we hadn't done shit because God's in charge, not us. And so the church is resilient and it's it's marching on. It doesn't belong to us. You know, we say, that's my church. And the truth is, we just probably should say that church belongs to Jesus. I get to go there. And so we're marching on. It's the church is resilient. And if I would add to what you said, uh, even religion tried to destroy the church. And, and, and Paul had ordered the brother of Sanhedrin to, to kill anybody that called the name of Jesus. That was religion attempting to kill the church. And when the, how, how many crusades were there? You, uh, Twelve different crusades over uh, three centuries um, when Christians and Muslims met on the Holy Land, on the Holy of Holy Land, uh, uh, um, to decide what was going to last. Now both of us get around <laughs> uh, uh, um, fourteen hundred years later, but uh, when they when they are trying when they were trying to uh, uh, um, to annihilate the church. At the, end, at the end of the day, they were trying to annihilate the church. Um, we were celebrating Thanksgiving, and when, and the truth is, when the, the when the, the, the separatist movement left England, they they weren't coming over here to continue the church. They were trying to just continue their fellowship. They wanted a, a land and a place where they were free to separate, not to unify. And, and so, but the church was resilient. No, the church is resilient. And, 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 and a multitude of denominations, people with various, not just racial differences, but ethnic differences, to come here and, and continue the church. But the truth is, in the early years of the church, Ethnic had a even a greater impact than, than, than racism is having now. How dare you be a, 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 a an Italian? How dare you be a, 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 a Irishman? You know, and, and in, in, the, in, in some of the early movements of the church, how dare you be Catholic? How dare you not be Catholic? And, and and an extension of that, somewhere near race develops. <laughs> and, and, and so, the flesh and, 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 human, and humanism tried to destroy the church, but the church is resilient. It's about life beyond the 60, 70, 100 years we got here on this earth, but the eternity of God. Every effort that has been made to try to destroy the church has actually made the church stronger and allowed for the church to spread. Um, the real that, church. The real church, yeah, to spread. And to what you were saying, there's something special that the church has in every believer, uh, a spirit of God. And the spirit of God, my spirit connects with your spirit, and the reason that we have that glow 
is because my spirit's connecting with your spirit, which is the same spirit. It's the spirit of God. Amen. Uh, I'm going to tell you one quick story. I know you wanted us to go quick. We went on a cruise one time, Sarah and I. And uh, we went there. And when you go on a cruise, you go into the, the fancy dining area. And uh, they always give you somebody to sit with. Well, Sarah and I went. We were all excited we were going to sit with somebody. And we sat down, ready to have conversation. Our dinner partner never showed up. We went, we went out of that kind of upset and like, man, we, we wanted to have dinner with someone. So the next night we go in and we sit down. Our dinner partner never showed up. Well, this couple over here, they started talking to us. So we started talking with them. Uh, and uh, we, we were on this thing. It was like a five-night cruise. Anyway, the whole time they never showed up. Well, the last day we ran into that couple, another area outside of the ship, massive ship, ended up talking with them. That evening we sat with them for dinner. And uh, come to find out that couple was, was a pastor, and he was on vacation just like us. And I thought, how amazing on this massive ship of 4,000-something people, the, the people we really connected with. Now, we talked to a lot of people on the ship, but we connected with them. They were, they were in a similar situation as us, pastor, pastor's wife. I just thought, man, that was awesome. But the Spirit of God, we, we recognized that. And we're like, man, this is a couple we want to hang out with. And um, that's something that the church has that's unique, that spirit. Last three things that we were going to discuss uh, is community, family, and country. And we've ran kind of out of time to discuss those, but those are things that really apply to, to not just us. That, that applies to um, all people can be thankful of their community and their families and, and their country. Um, but tonight, as we, we look at these things as Christians, what makes our community, what makes our families, what makes our countries different from the world. And we basically have negative four minutes at this point uh, to discuss this, but uh, one person gets to talk to say what makes the difference in the church or is for Christians, for the community and the family in the country. Who wants to try to tackle that? All right. Just out of seminary, they trained you all in negative in like. negative four minutes. Uh, you know, I think about this community, and I think about uh, my family. And it doesn't apply necessarily to country, but those are two small groups that really love me and support me and lift me and remind me about just how much God loves me. The country is the same way, I think, for all of us. We look at our country, and yeah, we go through periods of turmoil. But we live in a place where we can show up on Sunday morning at a place we call our church where we can lift the name of Jesus without any fear of retribution, without any fear of retaliation. Uh, you know, people speculate, how long will that be the case? I, I don't know, but I'm very thankful that it's the case last Sunday. It'll be the case this coming Sunday and hopefully for many, many Sundays after that. And I think for those reasons, we can all be thankful for our families, for this community, and for this country that we live in. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that uh, this kicks off your celebration of Thanksgiving week. Um, as you gather with your families on Thursday, remember that um, God is the most important thing to be thankful for, your salvation the spiritual gifts that you have received through that salvation, and uh, just go from there as you spend time thinking of all of the things that you are thankful for. Let me go ahead and close this in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Lord, I thank you for these godly men who I have the privilege to serve with in Clinch County. Lord, I thank you for their churches. I thank you for the work that uh, they do to spread your gospel throughout this community. Lord, I pray for every single person who watches this, whether they're in, here in Clinch County or if they're far and wide, that it will touch their hearts and help them to understand that aside from all of the materialistic things that they have in their life that they're thankful for, their relationship with you is the most important thing to be thankful for. Their salvation, the spiritual gifts that they receive from that salvation. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone here 
that has listened to this, watched this, whether it be on YouTube or somewhere else, that if they have never accepted you as their Savior, that through this they will admit that they are a sinner, believe that Jesus is the Christ, and confess Him as Lord of their life. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.